Nasu, Summer in Andalusia. Alright, before you go off, let's get this straight. Director Kitaro Kosaka was a longtime freelancer at Ghibli, going back as far as the early days of Future Boy Conan. And he made it high up the chain. To put it in perspective, he was Yoshifumi Kondo's animation director. So when you're Miyazaki's successor, this is who you turn to. He did fantastic work throughout the years, as late as The Wind Rises. And wouldn't you know it, he's a damn fine director too. Well employed primarily by Ghibli, he also had run-ins with Madhouse, who we're all fairly familiar with here, hmm? And so is Ghibli since Madhouse co-animated several of their projects. This time it's the other way around. It turns out the Ghibli crew were cycling enthusiasts. If you'd seen the Mononoke documentary, after production they go on a cross-country bike ride, they design their own bike gear, it's, it's cute. So Kosaka asked Miyazaki, how about an animation film about cycling? Because I know he's very fond of bike racing. So I suggested it, but he said a cycling film wouldn't be a hit. I don't want to do it, but you go ahead. Actually, it was Mr. Miyazaki who introduced me to the manga, Nasu, because he knew we share the interest in the sport. So I took the idea to Masao Maruyama of Madhouse, who I've known for a long time, and he accepted my idea to make the film. Kozaka was intimately involved in each side of the movie, a real passion project, if you will. Talking of passion projects, we've got third editions, nice little Kickstarter over here. I backed it, I won it, so I want you to back it so I can get it. There's a Miyazaki one, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna get the Akira one, make a couple of Akira videos. You wanna see those? Maybe back it. Or, you know, back me. Finish this Ghibli month, you know, give it a little support, just in case Ghibli tries to kill me. Nasu even holds some place in history as it premiered at Cannes Film Festival as the first anime it ever featured. Set in southern Spain during the Weda, it's like the Spanish Tour de France. In this Midnight Eye interview, Kosaka said, while keeping the experience authentic, they did compromise. And Lucia's vegetation is different, sparse. They intentionally made it that way to go with the race. In real life, it's a greener, lush place, at least around where the race was located. Same with the temperature, 45 degrees Celsius, way too hot. 10 degrees hotter than you'd expect from the hottest part of Andalusia. So it's a heightened reality, where Spanish culture is a big proponent of the storia. Andalusia's traditions are different depending on the area, yet it's so pivotal to the everyday. Nasu carries a lot of those broad ideas. Poverty is rife in the south, even to this day. Agriculture is widespread, it's wine and eggplants for days. You got those shoddy electronic sockets. We see magical girls on TV. El Secreto de Aco was brought to Spain later on, and it saw some success. But the movie giving a slight nod to the localization and the transnational connection between them and Spain, uh, I thought that was nice. There wasn't a little attention to detail. There's a traditional Catholic wedding. Carmen is the picture of Ander Leon beauty. See the Picasso painting, now of anime eyes. The flamenco, a staple of the culture to a stereotypical standard. Yet you can tell that they've went in with a labor of love when it comes to that dance. The first comparison you're gonna get is Ghibli. I mean, it's in the title, and for good reason. It's European setting with its long vistas and that familiar art style full of small, intricate animations that pull you in. Not to mention the food, look at that. But Nasu carves its own lane. This shot feels as if we were starting two thirds into the action. The chase of the race is the whole pitch. Meticulous gear changes, drifting corners, the increased pressure of climbing uphill before you zoom down, try not to kill yourself. Sure, this isn't as polished as Ghibli, but it's still damn fine. And come on, bikes are hard, man. Animating so many different parts, then adding a group. There's cuts where they feel like frames have been removed for time constraints. In certain group shot or fast cuts, they use basic CGI to fill in the numbers. It usually works as the models aren't in the forefront, though you can tell it's happening. As a digital product, it's bright, clean, and shiny, to a glossy extent, with the deep blues in the sky to trying to cancel it out. It's teeming with Easter eggs, you know, you've got these glasses, that reminds me of something from Nausicaa, maybe if it's the creature or the design. There's little parodies here with the European teams using different names and such and different icons. It's, it's sort of a love letter to the whole sport in general. This guy here, he reminds me of Madhouse's director Rintaro, who's also a huge cyclist. And sometimes the animation really goes, it really starts flowing, that sparking corner across the dynamic backdrops. During the final sprint, it's raw, razor margins, rough, thick lineage, reminiscent of the manga itself. 
That's when Toshiyuki Honda's soundtrack starts coming in. He's the same person who did Osamu Tezuka's Metropolis. He's a jazz composer, but he's bringing a traditional Spanish instrumentation here. It's a subtler take, sparingly used, only in pivotal moments. You've got the acoustic guitars, flutes, tambourine, and that samba-like production. It all builds around Pepe as if he was the bull chasing the red finish line. Although the sound of spinning wheels is the driving force from start to finish. I've been there, buddy. You know, I'm something of a cyclist myself. That wind's a doozy. As someone who has cycled against the fierce wind, I don't envy them, especially in that heat. All that cultural background brings a perspective to Pepe, who's lived in the shadow of his brother his whole life. If it's his bike, his accomplishments, or even his relationships, nine months out in forced military service, his sweetheart is now his brother's. And moving to the present, they're married. That's got a sting. And today, it's not his day. It's theirs. Until a spanner is thrown in the wheel, where he could lose it all. Where the possibility for Pepe outside of the circuit are small. He has little prospects in Andalusia. And there's something one of Pepe's friends say that really hit me. Living in Andalusia, if I could have left, I would have done the same. The only comfort here is to have a dream. And I left my dream to Pepe. It gives you a picture of why he fights and what it means to the people here. Breaking away from the pact, he's got to really be an individual here. Even if you're not sure that you are strong enough to achieve your goals, you should still try. That's what the director's getting at. Pepe's our guy, he's the underdog, and he's putting everything on the line, that burning spirit. He's hungry and bitter with a young vigor that wins out in the end. It's a strange snapshot of a story. There's blind spots, so I checked the manga to see if there was anything more here. You know, is there anything I'm missing? To my surprise, it's a fantastic adaptation, from the page to the screen, with the changes being subtle. The manga focuses on several different groups of people living in the south of Spain. It uses that source material and expands on it. A fragment of their lives that we watch through a rear window. In that regard, Nasu excels. The only one complaint I already have is I, I'd like more, please. I'd like a little bit more, you know, just a, just a little bit, just a little bit more time with these characters. <laughs> In 2007, another chapter of the manga became an OVA. I see the digital compositing has advanced, it's got some punch to it, flashes quicker, and while the CGI is better, it's used more, thus it intrudes past the amount in summer. The character design has changed, the style has evolved over time, going more in its own direction, though you can still see its origins. The animation director is now the one from Eureka 7 at Madhouse, Kozaka is taking up a fewer roles this time, but he, make no mistake, he's still in the trenches. There's a refined palette, it's less poster paint, and it has a bigger variety, and it complements the different tone. It's a high frame count, the staff is more experienced, they push the certain set pieces beyond, it's in your face. Kosaka had insecurities coming off his first film. This time I hope not. Certain scenes give you those Ponyo vibes. Well, he was working on the animation direction at the same time. So I think I start to see him as an animator, like come out more. The delicate expressions of the characters going overboard. Lots of feeding off each other's for bigger reactions. Every cut is so dense, there's so much going on. It's moving synchronized. Same with the humor. The last film could be crude, but light in tone. This time we're going blunt ass out comedy. And I believe it's intentional to try and balance out how bleak of an experience it can be. In the haze of a suicide from another professional they look up to, his death hits one member in particular, although he wouldn't like to show it. The air is filled with finality, as Powell Powell's team will disband in the coming year. Everyone's getting ready to say their goodbye and try and figure out what they're doing in their life. The music motifs return, and that's a big plus for me. They play wider, they noodle on top of the original, experiment a little bit. This time the tone of the music changes with each location, it's region specific. The setting has moved cross country, the race this time is suburban, dense, in the Japanese hills, and the heavens open up, making it a new race entirely. Welcome to my ride to work. The importance of the eggplant is also expanded on here. In the first film it was also mentioned as part of Andalusian culture, but it also relates to Japan because both are very fond of the food. In Japan it means something about the every person, it's a term that can be an insult. It's about the average people being able to move out of the cycle line of society to you know, forge their own destiny. The second short focuses on another teammate, and it helps reinforce that message, because we can relate to Cho Chi's direction after seeing Pepe struggle in the first film. There are still blanks. It's a vignette at this point, but that's just like real life. You don't get the full picture of people's lives and events. You're just passing by. If summer was momentum-based, just like the race, it's all about speeding forward, building on top, well, adding a couple things here and there. 
then migratory bird is reflective of where that momentum will take you. If you should stop altogether, what is it to be a professional in your field? How long can you keep it up? What is your reason to keep in a sport with such a limited life? Is it worth all the suffering? What drives us forward? What is the light in your lighthouse? And I don't want to actually say too much. I would rather you just watch them. J just watch it. I gotta appreciate what Masao Mariyama has done here. Like, the amount of projects he gives a chance is staggering. Nasu may have the talent of a Ghibli, but the studio wouldn't have made it. It's too niche. It's not quite as rounded as Suzuki likes. But it is an excellent double bill. Even if you don't know anything about cycling, it's still a total joyride, where both shorts come together as more than the sum of their parts. It's overlooked to a fault, and I understand why, because it barely sold anything. Maybe uh, 160,000 tickets were sold for summer in Andalusia? There was no mass release over here. The only one I saw was a limited edition in German. I was I was really uh, surprised you didn't see a French or Spanish release. I mean, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Huh? There is a Malaysian DVD, which is region free and has an English subtitle on it. So, you know, if you want to check it out legally, I'm just saying. Now, after watching this, I have more hope to see Kozaka in the future. I know he released a newer feature not so long ago called Oko's Inn. Maybe that will be next time's. And hey, thanks for watching everyone, a big thank you to Takeyuki, Suzuki, and Joven, and my other patrons for making this happen. Next video up is probably going to be The Cat Returns, thank you to the newer patrons that just came in, and I'll see you then.